Hello everybody, my name is Will and welcome back to another episode of Flyout Community Creations and today we're going to be starting off strong with a plane with a wingspan longer than my intros. Uh, this is the <laughs> CDVB61 and this one was designed by Bots. Bots with a flower. Uh, so this thing is meant to be like a post-apocalyptic kind of nuclear war survival plane built by the US. So this is meant to be like the world has gone to pot and uh, yeah, this this is the kind of plane that uh, they would have after a nuclear war, I suppose. Uh, and if we go in here, there's an input called cock door. So there you go. <laughs> And here we are on the runway, and as you can see, this thing has a massive wingspan. I imagine it's not particularly speedy uh, once you actually get into the air. This is very unusual here. We <laughs> we are seriously not able... To, it's just spinning. There we go. Uh, this is our takeoff run now, I suppose. Oh my goodness me. Uh, oh, Jesus. Oh my. Uh... Uh, what on earth was that? <laughs> it's that... The, every plane seems to just have its wings sucked towards the ground at low altitude. I really don't understand that. That's been happening lately. Uh, right, okay, we're airborne. As I was trying to say before I was so rudely interrupted, I can't imagine this thing is very quick, but we're going to give it a shot. Uh, and we got some bombs on here, so we will also uh, loose those before we uh, get to our speed run, because I feel like that is only fair. So we're going to go and try and take out one of these hangars right here. Now, I believe it's N to drop these bombs, so we probably want to be dropping... Uh, around about now, I would say they've dropped with a nice little pattern going on there, and hopefully those hit their mark, and they've gone way long. Yeah, yeah, they went way long. Okay. <laughs> sure thing. Right. Well, let's at least give this thing a shot at a speed record, um, but uh, I can imagine there's quite a lot of drag from the wings for some reason. Uh, just, just got that feeling, you know. <laughs> Okay, it looks like we're pretty much topping out here at about 512 kilometers an hour. So, as predicted, not the quickest thing in the world. But, uh, you know, that that's kind of not the point, I feel. Uh, we do also have a couple of forward-facing 50 cals, but I don't think we would catch up with the uh, drone to take it down. So, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to really get much more combat than the bombing out of this thing. So, we're, we'll just bring this thing back in for a landing, and uh, we'll move on to the next design. But I really enjoy, like, hypothetical designs like this, because... A lot of the time, a lot of really cool designs are just like mega fighters, and that's that's cool. I like a good mega fighter, but also a lot of planes in history, a lot of underappreciated planes, don't do like a big combat role. They're just reconnaissance, or they're just cargo. And these planes need a little bit of love as well, because things like the Beverly just don't get appreciated, just like an F-14 or an F-15 does. Because they're not, they're not quite as cool when you just look at them. They, they don't have that sex appeal, you know, but they're cool planes. And I've, I've got I've to gotta share a bit of love for these little weird ones. <laughs> and here we come in for a landing. That is not what I wanted to press. Uh, we're going to extend our wing gears. Not that you can see them, because when, <laughs> when I'm in F2 mode, the, uh, the wings are so long that they go outside of my view. But that's fine. We do have quite a lot of drag, so we're not worrying too much about the uh, overly excessive energy retention, but we are a bit quick for our landing, to be entirely honest. If I am able to get the wheels down, I should be able to just use the wheel brakes to uh, slow us most of the way here. We've got a plenty long runway, so why not? Uh, and hopefully we don't get the weird, like, suction to the ground, which kills us and destroys us, uh, which is entirely a possibility, but I, I'm confident that we'll be fine. Uh, we just need to get enough traction on the ground here that the wheel brakes start kicking in. Are there wheel... I don't think there's wheel brakes. Uh... Uh-oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bomb, I guess. Uh, yep, that's one way to stop, I guess. And... Uh, flawless landing. I there we go. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Next up, we have a very strange looking like early jet era fighter aircraft uh, designed by another 07 Lee design. Welcome back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now this thing tickles me in all of the right places, which sounds horrific when I say it out loud, but I I've said it now, so I'm stuck with it. This is like a l very late World War II, early Cold War vehicle, which is like my favourite era of aircraft design. It's got the underslung jets, which are always ridiculous. It's it's also got some weird wings going on here. And there's one thing about this plane, which once we take off, will become very quickly apparent why I've chosen to show this one off today. Okie dokie, here we go. We're gonna try and get this thing off the ground without any horrific tip stalls, and what you might be thinking is, isn't that a strange place for the wings to be? And it is kind of a strange place for the wings to be. You'd think it would give it a weird centre of gravity, but I guess because the engines and the fuel and the guns are all up here in the nose, as you can see, um, kind of balances it out, I guess, which is unusual. This is just not a traditional arrangement in any sense of the word for, for the wings of an aircraft, especially for a tail dragger like this one, but uh, it almost looks like a late model Spitfire turned into a jet. Okay, we're going to put the wings away there, and what we're going to do is we're going to go for a, a top speed run with the wings like this, and then we're going to play the special trump card that this design has up its sleeve. So our good friend Lee did warn us this is not going to reach Mach 1 as it was designed to meet 1945-1950 engine technology and going supersonic then was still quite the challenge. Uh, I don't know when the X1 was, I believe it was before 1950, but uh, that kind of technology would not be available to a mainstream jet fighter if this was presumably intending for that, though let's face it, it probably wouldn't get accepted in because of what you're about to see. So top speed right now is 923. If I press this here button, what you can see is our wings are now scissors. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that basically acts like a two-way oblique wing. So we've still got the symmetrical appearance. However, we have two different sweeps of wing here. Now, I can imagine in real life this is called cause all sorts of turbulence and weird laminar flows over the wings and stuff. I can imagine this is an aerodynamic nightmare, but as you can see, in flyout, it's increased our top speed by about 25 kilometers an hour, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really weird looking. <laughs> and if we go... If we go inside here, you can see we've got a nice little interior model. I didn't check the interior of the last one, which is my bad, because I bet it had a really cool interior, because it was mostly about visibility. But there you go. Whoops. Um, so this thing should definitely be quick enough to go for a target drone, so let's spawn one in and try and take it out. Now, I don't know what weapons we have. I wouldn't be surprised if they're 20 millimeters uh, or 30 mils. Oh, they're, they're 30 mils. I've just checked <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a really neat idea for a wing design. Um, I don't know how practical it really is. I mean, in real life, probably not very at all, but in the game, I feel like it's kind of fun. Uh, so maybe at some point we'll do something with this, but um, what is the question? <laughs> Okay, we're closing in on our target here. Uh, hopefully these guns aren't too much trouble to aim. It might be worth going into first person for this, to be entirely honest, uh, because we've got a little sight here. I don't know how useful it's going to be, but hopefully somewhat. Uh, this, I don't know, this dot is pretty obscuring. We're going to go back to third person, I believe. Uh, and hopefully we can take this guy out without making too much of a fool of myself. Want to lead a little bit if we can. And these are very slow firing 30 mils. Oh gosh, we got a good roll rate in this thing. Uh, oh, no, not feeling this aim right now. That's not too bad. Oh, come on, come on. We can do this, we can do this, surely. There. Yes, there we go. <laughs> right. Mission success. Uh, let's get this thing back to base and landed in one piece. 
Okay, we are struggling with uh, slowing down here, so we're going to just take a risk and turn off our engines here, because I don't think otherwise we're going to bleed off enough speed for this landing. But here we go. Uh, we should have no difficulties here, because when you've got the wings like this, it's pretty stable. When you've got the wings like this, you won't want to land. Look at the landing gear's angle. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I'd like to try it, but it's certain death. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you can work out what would happen. <laughs> And here we go. Please have wheel brakes. Please have wheel brakes. We need them. Gonna need them. Oh, yep. There we go. That's definitely got wheel brakes. I can feel it. And there we go. Nice, smooth landing. Voila. Very good. Uh, and can you open the cockpit on this one? You can. There we go. Oh, that's that's nice. There we go. Did you remember last episode where a bus repeatedly crashed my game? Here is a bus, designed by Thick as Frick, to crash my game repeatedly. <laughs> there are so many controls here. I am not going to remember any of this. Goodness me. Okay, here we are on the runway. We're going to give it some throttle here. Uh, what is the likelihood of this working? It's crashed. Okay, well, uh, it, it crashes my game again. Bus helicopter. They made a jet one. It also crashed my game. <laughs> what, what, what do I even say about this, man? Helicopter, I can't fly it. <laughs> Next up, we have the E23D Cutter by Howie799. And this is clearly meant to go really really fast so i am excited to fly this one it gives a uh, kind of boeing 2707 vibes uh competitor to the uh concord but there's no passenger windows so uh i wonder what it was for hmm <laughs> there is some really nice weathering going on with the decals on this thing and i am very much excited to see how fast it goes okay here we are on the runway now i assume there's a key for the droop snoot here. However, I do not fully know it. Uh, I have not been able to work out the droop snoot, but I am assuming, yes, the droop snoot is assigned to the flaps here, so you can see that the snoot droops. <laughs> okay, right. We are ready to go with this thing. I am very excited to fly this. This looks absolutely awesome. We're going to hit the engines up to full throttle, release the brakes, and with full flaps, we are ready to go here. We are pulling almost a G somehow. <laughs> Wait, what? No, that's normal. <laughs> what, am, what am I talking about? Goodness me. Here we go down the runway. And uh, it is a heavy fella here. We have an hour of fuel, even though we've got these massive afterburning engines. So uh, I, I know where most of that weight is coming from, I feel. <laughs> Uh, we're going to obviously try and climb to super high altitude. And, uh, oh my goodness me, this is going to be a challenge to take off, clearly. There we go. We've done it, though. And uh, now that we are in the air, we shall retract the gear and undroop the snoot. There we go. We are in full speedy mode. Uh, and we can also swap to swept wings by pressing three. There we go. And that is is what I am talking about. Goodness me. Yeah. Yep, I like that. <laughs> I like that very much. Okay, right. Let's climb up to a super high altitude here. And uh, supposedly this thing can reach Mach 3. So let's put that to the test. So we are at 12,000 meters and we've hit Mach 3 in a climb here. Uh, so... Yeah, I think we might exceed Mach 3 once we get up to altitude, you know? Just got a feeling. And now that we are cruising along at Mach 3.5, uh, I just wanted to uh, show off the cockpit in this thing. Because, yep, that is pretty cool. <laughs> I can't lie, that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine how long this all took to build goodness me <laughs>
So we just kind of keep accelerating here. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the autopilot. Uh, we're going to make our way back to home, which I, I mean, I'm definitely going to do all of that and not just respawn at the runway and, and land this thing again. But I want to see this thing land. Okay, in we come for a landing here. Now, we do have a lot of speed going on and a lot of flaps, but we do also have air brakes that we can pull out here, which are just kind of on the elevator, which is pretty cool. I quite like that. They're kind of hard to see based on where the camera is, but uh, that's not too much of a problem. Uh, we have so much idle throttle in this thing that it is proving a little tough, but I think the recommended landing speed is about 400 kilometers an hour, so we are about there. We've just got to be very careful. I can't really do mouse control because it puts me in the tail, uh, but somehow... We just kind of nailed that. I mean, it was a bit tough, but not too bad at all, actually. And, uh, yeah, there you go. That was actually a surprisingly perfect landing. Um, wow, uh, I'm impressed with myself, to be entirely honest. And most of all, I'm impressed with this thing. This is super cool, and uh, I would love to have another go at building something kind of like this in the future. So uh, we'll see if a video pro pops up with uh, one of these kind of supersonic competitors. But uh, yeah, for now, we'll move on to the next plane. Okay, what we have now is the Sokol class Ekrano plan. Now, Ekrano plan, I'm assuming most of you know, but these are kind of a, uh, a design which make use of the ground effect of uh, flying close to a flat surface. Uh, these were trialed on the Caspian Sea by Russia with the uh, Caspian Sea Monster or KLM. I, some, no, KLM's an airline. Um, but regardless, these are a real thing. This one isn't. Um, this is designed by Open Pendulum, and uh, I'm very excited to give this one a go because these are some really, really cool concept aircraft. Uh, they didn't really catch on because of the huge, massive gaping flaws with the idea. But, you know, it's fun to play around with in Flyout because, uh, you know, why limit ourselves to reality when we're not limited to reality? <laughs> so, right, we got to spool up the engines to take this thing off. Uh, we also have these slightly smaller takeoff engines that we can spool up, which will give us a little bit of extra beans just to pull off the surface here. Now, we will be flying really, really, really close to the water's surface to actually make use of the ground effect here. And uh, as you can see, this thing is super heavy, and it's going to take a long time for us to actually pull up and off the water. But we've got this massive area to generate a cushion underneath with all these fins to keep us horizontally stable. Uh, so we're going to be very, very stable and very, very quick in a flat line. But uh, as with the real life designs of this thing, the problem comes when you actually need to turn. They're just not good at it. <laughs> so on any rough surface as well, these things just kind of fall out of the sky. Uh, so Obviously, these designs have their flaws, as I have hinted towards. I can imagine these bottom engines as well would be a nightmare for maintenance being so close to the water. But, uh, you know, who cares? We're here for fun, not for reality. <laughs> and the weathering on this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I really, really wish I had the time in a week to uh, spend designing something like this because, uh, my God, it's cool. Oh, there we go. We have finally taken off and that took a fat moment i've got to say that was a seriously long time but we are finally hugging the ground effect here and i believe we can just turn off these takeoff engines and we should just cruise on this cushion of air at exactly 14 meters above the water here uh, hopefully we might need to give it a little bit of trim just to make sure it kind of stays up but uh here we go <laughs> What a monstrous craft. This thing is huge, and we can slowly but surely maneuver this thing. There is very, very little you can do when it comes to suggesting where this thing is about to go. But um, as you can see, that is due to the massive nature of this thing. And as a result, it can take off with uh, about 240 tons of payload, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's quite a lot. Um, all right, all of this beauty aside, we're going to bring her down now. Uh, and this is also 
a very, very long procedure. We're just going to cut the throttle all the way down here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to just turn off the engines fully because otherwise we're going to have to deal with the idle throttle and it's going to take us all week. So <laughs> bear with me here. And at some point, what we're going to do is we're just going to drop out of this cushion of air and fall down into the water with a satisfying little plop. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go, down we go into the water, and then it's just a matter of letting this thing slow down on its own accord, which given how in insanely heavy it is, that is actually going to take a long time. So we're not going to wait for it to reach zero kilometers an hour, but uh, this is a really, really cool design. Uh, not a lot you can do with it in flyout, but uh, I'd love to see like a an entire... Because obviously Messier has his like prop punk kind of world where jet engines weren't the norm in the cold war uh it would be kind of interesting to see a world where like akrano plans were developed into like fighters as well where they linger in the ground effect for like an extended period of time and then you know stick out their wings a bit more and go into combat mode where they're hugely inefficient but they've got all of the benefits of a fighter i don't know does that sound cool is that an interesting concept if you like that see if you can design something along those lines and uh, i'd love to see what you can do with that idea because uh, that's literally just coming to my mind right now is that stupid it might be but it could be cool and last but not least we have another ace combat design by fairchild 972 this time it is the X02S Strike Wyvern, and I'm sure if you want to know more about this, I've never played Ace Combat, so I don't know about it, but the comment section always knows a lot about Ace Combat, so the lore for this thing is probably in the comments if you want to know that. Uh, so we've got a couple of controls here which I'm going to try and remember, but uh, straight off the bat, this thing is mental looking. I mean, there's no rudder on this thing. I, I don't really know why, but I'm assuming it's going to do thrust vectoring and these sticky up bits. But this looks insanely cool. Uh, I really, really like these massive engine pods going on underneath that kind of flow on top of the aircraft towards the back. Interesting design. I don't know how practical it would be, but definitely cool. And now that we're on the runway, you can see the the feature of this plane which is the wings oh my god this looks cool I, maybe i do need to play ace combat <laughs> my goodness me okay right i'm getting pulled really aggressively to the right here but there we go we've now got enough speed to overcome that and this just has such an aggressive angle to the ground I really really interesting uh, and a very very nice little roll rate going on and look at the g's of this thing goodness me <laughs> and then it just carries on once again i these kind of insane fighters it's a different type of cool to the planes that i sometimes like to build as i explained in the start of this video but i mean what I don't even know where to start with this thing. This is insanely cool. What we're going to do, we're going to fold in the wings here, and then it looks a little bit more like a traditional fighter, but still a little bit wonky. Oh, my. Oh, dear. Oh, we're, we are jiggling something fierce, aren't we? Uh, oh, dear. Wait. Mm, please? Okay. Right. Maybe stable? Maybe not? Can we, can we not do the jiggle? Oh, dear. Uh... Right. I don't know why it's jiggling so much. Uh, presumably something to do with fly-by-wire. But uh, we're going to hope that that's not too big of a problem. We're not going to do a speed test because that's going to be absolutely nightmarish with this jiggle going on. Uh, we are going to cut the throttle down and we're going to spawn in a target drone because we have got concealed missiles going on in here. That is so many missiles. Are you serious? Oh my god, I'm going to have a bit of fun with this one. Right, how many target drones can we spawn in? We should definitely have the wings out right now. Uh, let's spawn another... It's it's limiting my pace of target drone spawning. <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> okay, right, that's a couple target drones spawned in now. We're going to turn to follow this fella up here. And woo, aggressive stall. Uh, there we go. Come on, come on, get a lock. There we go, missile out. Come on, find your target. Find your target. You're a futuristic plane. You can find that target. No problem. Ah, <laughs> yes. Right, close those weapons bays in. We've got the uh, kind of 
what what are they called? There's a name for that cut where it's spiky. It gives it a little bit more stealth, I understand. Uh, I can't remember the actual name for it. It uses it on the F-35 and the F-117, all, all of the stealth planes. We have a lock all the way out at six kilometers here. I don't think that's going to succeed. We jiggle so much here. I, I feel really bad because I, I don't want this to jiggle the whole time, but I, I don't want to change anything about the plane in order to make it look different to how it was submitted. So, uh, jiggling it is. <laughs> the jiggly stealth fighter. <laughs> right. Missile out. Good God, that is a high fire rate gun. Uh, that should be a definite kill there. No problem whatsoever. We've got another target drone four kilometers out here. I reckon with our speed, that missile should actually find its target. I know it's a long way for it to go, but it started with a big head start. And there we go. <laughs> Not a problem. Oh, yes. There is so much satisfaction. I cannot wait to be able to dogfight other actual planes, not just the target drones in this game, because there is just so much satisfaction from sniping someone with a Fox 2. <laughs> right, let's bring the Jiggly Stealth Fighter in for a landing and call it a day here. Okay, here we come for a landing here. Uh, we're going to have to be a little bit cautious that we don't stall this thing out because it is definitely capable of doing so, even at these low kind of speeds. Uh, we're just going to need to make sure that we flare this thing up enough and hopefully we'll get a nice, smooth, ooh, a little bit rough, but not the worst we've ever had by a strong margin. <laughs> <laughs> and some pretty strong brakes as well to go alongside it. And, uh, oopsie. Uh, sorry, anyone over there with a fireplace? Oh, dear. That could definitely go badly with the local authorities. Uh, we also, I believe, have a fully fleshed out cockpit in here. Uh, and eh, fairly, fairly modest cockpit going on. But, uh, yeah, I like it. Lovely. Uh, so thank you all for submitting your craft this a uh, two-week period, I guess. I don't know how long it's been. Um, but these have been some really awesome submissions. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe to the channel if you did. And uh, I will see you in the future. And goodbye! And as always, a huge thanks to this channel's patrons, Ambroise, Chemgem135, Cody N, DG Pete, Skavoon, Gamma 929, Sad Catch, Us Casual T6 and 1, Last Legend 11, Look Under Your Bed, Patchwitz, Mark, Malon, Gwekin, Mardly Invested, Nicholas K, Rawls Bakken, Ryan Brody, Ryan Brody, The Kinesian Emperor, Worth Sickle, Zerashime, and Zite Wolverine. Thank you so much for your support. Bye!